the church. Uh, will you help us to bring brethren in, please? Will you help brethren in? At the end I'm going to give you the host. You can help to bring. Okay. Praise the Lord. Ah, good evening, Dada Lucy. Oh, your complete holiness. Okay. I see your complete holiness. Okay, I'll just give a new host. You just help us bring the people in. Praise the Lord. Um, the topic of our Bible study today is about the day of judgment. Why is the judgment day important? As we become Christians, when we say we are saved, it's very important to understand why we are saved. We are saved primarily for one thing. We are saved because of judgment. That is why we become Christians. We are running away from one thing, the judgment of God. Last week, as I was introducing the judgment, I said there are four things that we need to be aware of on the judgment day or the day of judgment. One, that day is universal. It's for everybody, whether a Muslim, a Bawai, a Pagan, a Greek, an American, a Zimbabwean, a, a person from Iraq, a Chinese, anybody is going to be individual. Whether you um, a chief executive, a president, you are single, you are married, it doesn't matter. Inescapable. Yeah, nobody is going to escape. And we said it's going to be Tara. When you say it's going to be Tara, nobody is going to escape it. It's going to be scrutinized. It's going to be fair. And it's going to be final. Nobody is going to escape it. So every one of us is going to give account of our lives, how we live our lives. That's why it's important, especially those six years that we have talked about as Christians. So we need to account of our lives. So what purpose does the judgment serve? What is the, what is the basis of this judgment? That is what we were talking about last week. I'm just trying to give um, a run a roundup a, a roundup or a, a refresher to what we talked about last week before I get a little bit deeper to what we are going to talk about today. Then we round it up tomorrow so that we can entertain some questions today. It's very important. When you say you are saved, what are we saved from? Do we really understand when you say you are saved? What are you being saved from? Is the Lord Jesus Christ going to save your thoughts? Is, it going to, is he going to judge your thoughts? Is he going to judge your actions? Is he going to judge your words? Is he going to judge your secret acts? What is he going to judge? What must we do to prepare for this judgment? There are many things that we do, especially in private. But there's somebody that sees those things that we do in private. So our Christianity is most defined by the things that we do in private, not the things that we do. Because when I'm here, that's what you see. Of course, I will not come with my beer here. You wouldn't see I'm drinking beer. I wouldn't come and smoke here. No, you wouldn't see it. That's not Christianity. Christianity is always defined by the private moments where I'm sitting alone, how I treat the lowest person out there, how I treat my gate man. You pig, will you open the door? Idiot. Ah, that's how, that's how our pastor speaks to that low man. How do you talk to the help, to your house help? Now, you finish cooking, say yes. Can you go and make your food with that of the dogs? That's, your, that's how you treat your house help. That's your Christianity. 
Now you are preaching, God loves everybody. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's you preaching now. But how do you live this your private life? That is the private part we talked in our, uh, one of our private, uh, one of our magazine, I think the third edition. The way that this is what God said, that's where hypocrisy comes in. What we portray out there is what, how we live here. People, Christians, especially those that have got made, they are clothes, they live in the bathroom, in the tub, where water is easily splashed. And they say here yeah, they are Christians. Treat everybody equally, humility. Yet they don't treat this one equally. Because this one say, no, it's a maid, it's like a slave. These are the things, that's where judgment comes in. How do you treat people? Then we should be afraid. Romans chapter 2, verse 16 says, the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. The secrets of men, that is a secret. That woman, that man will be crying. You call them pig, you call them dog. They were made in the image of God, but you are calling them dog because they are in unfortunate circumstances. Probably they want to send their children to school. That is why they are allowing you to call them dog. They say, I don't blame you. It is my situation I blame. It is my poverty that I blame. That's how we treat it, terms people. So there are many passages in the Bible that teaches us that when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again and all we ever lived on this earth are going to stand before him and give an account of our lives. On that day, it will be the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And every one of us is going, he is going to give a reward. He said, my reward is with me. I'll give every man according to that which he has done, whether good or bad. Remember in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse nine, nine and 10, he said, who can understand the heart? I'm just paraphrasing. The heart is desperately wicked. I will give every man according to that which he has done. At times we don't even understand our hearts. King David said, God, oh, give me a new heart. He said, I don't understand my heart. Because we need it at times. We read a lot of Bible verses last week. We saw the, the white throne judgment, the Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15. We saw this is the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Revelation chapter 12, now, the one that said that Helen read, Revelation chapter 12, uh, it, it is just it's chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. This is the whole conclusion of all, the whole matter. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It is appointed upon men once to die. You die only once. Those that you see coming back to life, consider it a mistake. Those that you see coming back to tell us what is there in the great beyond, consider it a mistake. What Lazarus did in the Bible that God allowed him to come back, consider it a mistake. That's what I always tell myself, consider it a mistake. Not many people are fortunate. My parents were not fortunate. My brother was not fortunate. My sister was not fortunate. They went right beyond, they never came back. They never came back to tell what lies there beyond. It was appointed them to go. They never came back to tell what is there. Said, said stories beyond there. So it is appointed upon men once to die. There are sad stories. When you hear the stories that are happening there, when I know, when I calculate, when my father died, if I calculate 46, if you had missed, if you missed the road, I calculate this 40 years, years of torment. 
then it's not funny. It's a day of torment. Then the judgment is coming. We must be ready. When we say we are saved, we understand what we are saved from. Don't be deceived by ministers of God who are preaching for their belly. They come and tell us, God is a good God. Yes, but God has got a very bad side as well. <clears throat> I've always told people, God has got a very bad side that people do not want to talk about. Yes, he has got a bad side. The goodness and severity of God. He has got his good side, yes. Also, he has got a bad side. Don't be lied to that the Lord Jesus Christ was smiling, this and that, no. So like I said, what we wanted to talk about when we say the judgment day was to look at this, um, that God is going to judge the spirits of men through Christ Jesus. So all of us were going to face that, that judgment. So surely we should know about it. Even if you don't know about it, we are still going to face it. That's why it's very important for the church to teach judgment. We talk about salvation. We talk about especially the pandemics. Receive. They sow a seed. That we are good at telling people, sow a seed. I want you to bless the man of God. Sure. If you come, sow a seed. Oh, yes, God can do something. You are blessing a servant of God. Oh, yes, you will get something. God can surely answer you. Come and sow 1,000. You can get a miraculous 10,000. Oh, yes, you can. You have blessed a servant of God. But at what cost? You, can, you may attract an earthly blessing. What about the heavenly? I do not want to blackmail you into, into, into you giving me something. No, I'm not going to do it. I was not called for men, by men, to please men. If I, if I am so desperate, I can, ask just, I can just come and ask, you, you know, we can come and teach you how to make money. I was not called. If you want seminar for money, there are people who are doing it. Go and give the money, they will teach you how to make money. I was not called for that. He, he called me for a different assignment. If I want anything, he promised me, come to me. I don't have to, I don't have to come to you to worry for to worry you about anything. No. I was not called by men. He called me. He promised to take care of my needs. That's why I've never preached from my belly. When you see as a minister of God preaching for your belly, then you are called of men. Men dictates what you should preach. He said, if you preach this gospel, I'm not going to pay your rent. I'm not going to pay your son's office. I'm not going to do this. Then you end up saying, no, what am I going to do? But if he has called you, he makes a way. He is truly faithful. That is the problem of the church today. That's why these kind of teachings are no, lo are, are no longer heard in the church. You preach like this, people will go because they are not comfortable hearing about it. They don't want to hear these things because everybody is comfortable in their sin. If you preach like this, people, are, people become sober. When you tell them, you say, oh yes, one day as you are hearing this message, today could be your last day. You are going to stand before him. What are you going to say? How many years? Oh, 47 years, sir. Account? Your life will be like this from this age, from 14. Let's start from 14. I'll forgive, I'll forgive you what from 12, 13, from 14. Let's start from, from two. Ah, sir. <laughs> yes, this. You started smoking from 16, right? Go on. This, 17, go on. Mm -hmm. Go on. No soul, nothing. 
Nothing, no salt your credit, nothing. What are you going to tell God? You have no soul to your credit. Nothing, nothing, nothing. God gave you a family. Not even your husband was a Christian. Nothing. Not even your wife was a Christian. No. Not even your own mother was a Christian. No. Let's see his end like this. You spent equivalent of 85, 83 days speaking to these people on the phone. Not even one day did you mention my name to these people? How many times did you spend talking nonsense? Equivalent of 83 days. Everything will be written there. What are you going to say? You were just saying your head like this. What's the opportunity? When you say, I'm sorry, you say, you will say, Lord, I am like that for you. That's for me. Let us not waste opportunities. The judgment of God is coming. Everyone who is not ready will wish they've been ready. That's why the church, that's why the punishment of pastors is heavier in heaven than it is on this end of eternity. If you are a minister of God, you must be able to tell the truth. Whether you leave it or not, that's why I said I will not meet God with blood on my hands. I've made it very clear. For any reason, I will not come and say, oh, CHMI, I told you a lie. No. No man can stand and come and say, but pastor, you told us this. He said, no. I will not meet God with blood on my hands. My hands will be clean. If there are sins, there will be sins that I committed as an individual. Not that I did not tell the truth, no. Sins that will be counted on me, on me as an individual, yes. Not that I did not tell them, no. Wherever the Lord sent me, I'll come. I told the church, wherever they sent me, I said, I will not come, I will not go with, blood, with your blood on my hands. I made it very clear. I'm not coming to make friends. If I need friends, I'll go on Facebook. Neither am I coming to insult anybody. No. That's bringing the word of God. It's coming from me. I'm not coming as somebody who's holy. No. I'm coming as one who was coming from you in the time past. I'm coming as somebody who found the mess of God. This is the message that I bring. The message that I bring. If you, God shows you the same message that he showed me, God be the glory. But don't see it as I see it as the existential of mess that it. When you make it clear to people that is the love of God, when people don't feel judged, no, they come. There's somewhere where God asked me to go to minister. I gave one, one ministration. The whole church came forward. He did get their lives to the Lord. Everybody came forward. I said, you don't know. The problem is you don't know whether the message that you're hearing is your last. You go to sleep, you don't wake up, what happens? People look at me like this. Yes, it will be true. I don't know. I'm not good. Everybody looked at me and said, oh, yes. I don't know. So what is the purpose of judgment? Why must there be a judgment? That is the question. Why must there be judgment? Judgment must fulfill the mercy of God. It must fulfill the mercy and justice of God. Because those that must sin must be judged. Those that must, those that are living righteous must also be rewarded. Because me and the, me and the Muslims are killing those people, we cannot be in the same boat, it's impossible. So judgment fulfills the mercy and justice of God. The goodness of God leads men to repent. But those that live, so the impenitence treasures up the wrath of God, very clear, which is on the day of judgment. So mercy demands that God gives people a chance to change. 
that is mercy. Mercy does not give us that room to continue to live in sin. No, Romans chapter two, verse four. Mercy helps us to come to change. So the goodness, what's goodness, forbearance, long suffering, it gives us that chance. Does God give us this chance? When you see yourself wanting to continue to fight, to continue to, there's something wrong with the Christianity. Apostle Paul, mm-hmm. Apostle Paul said, examine yourself and see if you are in faith. Examine yourself and see if you are in faith. Remember the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. The prodigal son, he compares um, the, um, the, the father, he was waiting. When he saw the son coming, it's like God. He saw the, the old man, you know, God cannot grow old. But he saw, he just saw the father. He starts to walk with his stick. Oh, my son is coming. He was looking every blessed day for the son. He started walking with his stick, going to meet the son. But as usual, people don't talk about the brother. Those are the people that in the church, the Pharisee. People with a holier than thou attitude. Although the son rebelled, and committed great evil. The father was still hoping, like many of us in the world, this is the message we teach people. Even though you are still out there in the world, sinning, God is still hoping that you don't condemn people. Because once they feel condemned, what purpose, what, what is the need? Why should I come if God has condemned me? So your God is waiting to punish people. That's what he's known for. I heard somebody say, so your God is no other business. He's just sitting, you see, punish you. You see, to punish Say No, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall be saved. That's why he came. He didn't come to punish people. He came to save. And here we are, we are busy selling people say, you know what? This our God is an evil God. He's busy punishing people. We don't speak about his love. Because love covered the multitude of sin. What do we have? Always something if, if, if. Many people think that our lives, that we are, there is a lot of sin in our life that we cannot be redeemed. No. Apostle Paul, we fought an example. Anyway, where he hears say, Jesus, Take a walk, run there, kill people. But he almost wrote single-handedly all the New Testament books. That's the person God used. God sent his only begotten son to provide us opportunity for forgiveness. So God's justice requires that he brings the wrath those who refuse to repent. So it is a righteous thing for God to judge and punish the disobedient. Sister Noella, do you have your Bible? Can, can you read for me 2 Thessalonians? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse five to nine. I read in Jesus' name. Which second Thessalonians chapter five, verse one to nine, right? Yes. Yeah, sure, sure. Chapter one, verse five to nine, or chapter one, verse five to nine. Yes, please. Sorry. Yeah. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse five, five, verses five. Um, Second Thessalonians chapter one, verses five to nine. Okay. I read in Jesus' name. 
which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Amen. Amen. So God's justice requires that he bring wrath on those who refuse to repent. So it is, a, it is a righteous thing for God to judge and punish the disobedient. After God sacrificed his son so that we can receive eternal um, life for our sins, if we still refuse to change, then justice demands that we should be punished. So justice is going to accomplish the purpose of God's mercy. That is the justice of God. So can somebody read for me Romans chapter 2, verse 6 to 10? Romans chapter 2, verse 6 to 10. Romans chapter 2, verse 6 to 10, I read. Amen. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil and of the Jews first and also of the Gentiles, but glory honor and peace to every man that walketh good, to the Jews first and also to the Gentiles. Amen. Here we have got something that is very That meant here is it serious the eternal destinies, people. Once you die, it's finished, it's eternal. So what is it? You know, it's not like in the court where when you say you are sentenced to five day, five years, in prison, you will come out. Here it's finished, it's eternal. Once you are declared innocent, you are, you are going to be free and free forever. So when we, when we are declared innocent, not be changed, the judgment seat of Christ. So judgment day, it's a formal statement of verdict which cannot be changed. It cannot be changed. Those who do not obey the truth, but do evil, is going to receive the wrath and tribulation and anguish. The wicked is going to go into everlasting destruction, on fire. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Anyone not found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15. So the Bible gives us scriptures. The one sister Noella read, Second um, Thessalonians chapter one, verse five to nine, or Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse eight. For the fearful, the unbelieving, the warmongers, the Bible is very clear that those that do not believe are going for judgment. So those who continue doing good will receive eternal life glory and honor and peace. The righteous are going to go into eternal life. It's very important. It's extremely important. So I have got a question now. I have got a question for you and me. Are we ready? Dada Helen, are we ready for this day? Are we ready? Praise the Lord. We are on, I'm on the way. <laughs> but 
by the grace of God. But I can't say I'm ready. Yeah, there's so many things to make it right. So I pray that I will be ready. Okay, praise the Lord. Dada Lucy, are we ready? This is the judgment day. They are saying, when we hear this thing, that's why we say we are Christians. When you say a rapture, a rapture, this is the judgment of course that comes. If you are left behind, you don't know whether you make it. That's why we come. So when we say we are saved, because if, if a person dies, your rapture is come. Either you make it or not. So what happens if you are not saved? Judgment has come already. Are we ready for this judgment of God? Amen. 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 When you say uh, judgment of God, and when we say the second coming of Christ, and when we say rapture, when Jesus is coming back to those who are ready, ready meaning you're crucified totally sold because I was thinking just yesterday because um, I was just trying to prepare a message of a crucifixion of your mm -hmm. crucified life. And I'm watching myself and I say, Jesus is not coming back to Christians who go to church. Christian, uh, Jesus is not coming for those who are just saved and say, I'm saved. Jesus is coming for those who are crucified with him, buried with him, died with him. Why I thought about that, I thought about the disciples. The disciples went through a lot of pain. How come did Stephen being stoned and he was smiling at the same time pain so he saw two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. I tried to think the love, and because he was so sold out for Christ, the love of Christ and the presence of Christ overshadowed the pain. So he could feel that pain. What he saw overshadowed the pain. So I said, what was so special about that man and me? Because we are in holiness, we are praying, we are fasting, but crucifixion is the key of rapture. Crucifixion, I mean, Jesus went to be crucified, to be glorified. So if we are not working forward, we are not working hard to be crucified, to nail this, this it's painful, to nail ourselves on the cross, to nail our, to fill those nails. Even if we pray, even if we go to church, even if we do, because today I had a very big test and I'm still thinking about it <laughs> because I've been praying about crucifixion. I've been fasting on this crucifixion and I'm preparing a message on this crucifixion and God gave me a test, a real test. And I, I kept for myself, I said, this is what you say you have to do. You have just to, Quiet, think, think fast because that moment. And then later I said, did I pass that test? I didn't pass because I said, why did this woman just insult me in front of people like this? She need to respect me. Like, you know, I just said, God, I failed it. I failed that test because it was a test on what I'm working on. So I've come to say, God, now help me. I want to crucify this. I want to crucify. So these are the things we are supposed to prepare for the judgment. Yourself, who is you? You know, if you, we realize ourselves, and that's what I say, we are not ready. Because let, let something trigger that anger in you. It will come out. Let something trigger that jealousy. It will come out. So those are the things we should watch and think about it and say, a Microsoft, Peter was not an angel. Paul was not an angel. Mm -hmm. Stephen was not an angel. There were people like us. But how come Peter was crucified upside down? 
but he the 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 that's the the crucifixion overshadowed the pain that he went through because he saw heaven he saw christ in front of him he saw where he was going so how do we do that how do we come that we can see the trends of heaven and the trends of pain that the trends of heaven can overshadow that pain that what we go through that flesh that <laughs> can, 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 can you read Luke chapter 9, verse 23? I Luke. think it can, it can explain one thing that you are trying to say. Luke 9, verse 23. Luke 9, verse 23. 23. Luke 9, 23. Yeah. Luke 9, 23 says, I will read in Jesus' name. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Can, can, can you repeat it again? And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Really? Weekly, daily, daily. We weekly, not not weekly, right? Daily. No, that's what daily. he says. Daily, he said daily him. exercise. Every it's day you wake up. Amen. Daily, daily yeah. exercise. Exactly. So I, I was just thinking. I say, okay, mm -hmm. what is taking your cross? Mm -hmm. What is that that you take your cross? What is that? What, because there are a few things you take to deny yourself to take up the cross and to follow me. Those three things. Mm -hmm. So I was, I have them on the paper. That's why I'm saying I wrote them down. So say, what is denying myself is to say no to your feelings, to say no to your emotions, to say no. Everything that is contrary to the, to the righteousness of God, you just say no. I can't yeah. do this. And that one with um, Romans chapter 4 says to, it's almost, it's a daily exercise also. A daily exercise. It's a daily, a number 12, Romans chapter 2, 12 verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, this but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind. It's a daily exercise. Not, daily. No, not It's not a once, it's every day until Christ is fully formed in you. But people that ah, I did it today. Christ can be totally removed from your mind today. You did it today until Christ is removed. This Bible that you see today, it can be totally removed from your head, totally. Exactly. Then, ah, I had Christ in my mind. It, it can be removed from your head. Forget that you had Christ. It can be totally removed from your head. But, but uh, I was this, the Bible can, can be easily be taken away from your head. A second. So these, are two, these are things that Christians need to be very yeah. careful about. It's like a dream. They are dream stealers. You had a dream, you, have, you wake up like this. I remember, I remember. When you wake up, say, oh, I forgot. It has been stolen. So you need to be very careful. It's a daily exercise. It's not something that you just do once. Sister Noella, are we ready for this chat? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord really help us, help me in particular. By the grace of God, we are walking daily in the mercy of God because I just believe that it is the mercy of God that will take us there. To say that you can do it on your own, you cannot. So I, what I know is by his grace, I am walking in his mercy because I know that I, by one way or the other, I am probably failing in an area which I probably might not know. So it is only his mercy that can cover me. So if God will help all of us as well, to, not to look at ourselves as if we 
we have already like arrived, like we are very holy, but that is what will really make many of us not to make it because we, as we have come into holiness, we think we are better than others. We are not, we are not better than others. Those that are still out there, those that are still in the world, we are not better than them. It is only the mercy. The word of God says, it's not of him that will and of him that run. It's not of him that run and of him that will it. I'm not saying well, but it is of God that showed mercy. So it is only by the mercy of God that will make it. So if, if the Lord will help us all to humble ourselves and walk in his mercy and be conscious of what we are to do, I believe by his grace, we will make it at last because that heaven, we cannot afford to miss it. I cannot afford to miss them. So by his grace, amen. Amen. Before I go to Auntie Jovita, there is a Bible verse that scares me. I think it's Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Let me look for it. Yeah. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Dada Helen, can you read this? Can you read it for me, please? Luke chapter 22, verse 32. I want to show you something, something. This is the head of apostles. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. This was the head of apostles. The one that was with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want you to see something very peculiar. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Okay, I read in Jesus name. Amen. But I have prayed for thee that thy face fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. This converted that Helen, that is when you become a Christian, that's what it means. Are you converted? That's what you mean, conversion. You say, Peter, when you become a Christian, that is what is being converted. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling his chief apostle. He is the head of apostles. Say, Peter, when you become, this is a pastor being told, when pastor, when you become a Christian, strengthen thy brethren. He was in the church being told. This is general overseer of a church, of a ministry with the 22,000 people following him. 55 churches or 110 churches in 55 countries. Now he's being told if you become a, when you become a Christian, I want you to strengthen people. How does it feel? You see where the danger, this was a man with God or he thought he was with God. He thought he was ready. You see, uh, as Sister Noella says something, the I have arrived syndrome. I am already there. Me, I have already died. You know, we are in holiness. Are we not in holiness? Don't take this group responsibility to see, to think, because I'm in CHMI, God is here. God is everywhere. Forget about it, God is everywhere. There is, it's always an individual responsibility. What is in CHMI does not mean every one of us is going to have. It's how we are going to walk with him. This is Apostle Peter. Apostle Peter was the head of the apostles. Now he's being told, Peter, when you become a Christian, I want you to strengthen the brethren. And he thought he was ready. So when we see ourselves now, we are here, say rapture is coming. When you look this statement, you must be afraid. This is a person, we are talking about pastor here. This was shortly before he was going to the cross. It was over three years now, almost three and a half years. Just imagine, almost three and a half years, getting these powerful teachings, nothing has moved Peter until then. Nothing. 
Nothing had moved Peter. Nothing had changed Peter's character. After this, he, had, he rejected the Lord. Remember, after this, he said, after the, that's where he saw, he said, I never knew this man. He cursed. After, after this, he cursed again. He said, I don't know this man. What are you talking about? I never knew this man. This is where he cursed him. He thought he had arrived. So this journey is not an easy journey. I loved the Bible verse that um, Sister Noella quoted. It's not that him that Janet or Willie, it's God who showed mercy. At times, it's not good to make a lot of mouth. The people that we are condemning and laughing off out there, the Lord himself that the prostitutes and Puritans are going ahead of us into the kingdom of God. Because we think we know too much that we live a short life. Imagine Peter, three and a half years at the feet of Christ. Revelations touching his eyes like this, he's seeing in the spirit dreams. Judas Iscariot was busy preaching holiness, Judas Iscariot, helping himself to the best. After, pre after preaching holiness, you still, still take money, take money. Just imagine, after preaching this holiness, the way we are preaching now, you still steal money from that, from that person. Not, not that the Lord Jesus Christ didn't know. That Gehazi, that, that Gehazi the, the servant of Elisha, after preaching that same holiness, covetousness, he said, no, no, come, give me that money. So these things, they've always been happening. But these are the people that say, we know holiness. It's not knowing holiness, it's how you live. You see, the, you see where, where the difference of this, of this judgment comes in. It's not, it's not the word, it's how you live that counts at the end of it. That's where judgment comes in. You can know this Bible inside out. It doesn't make any difference. Theologians who tell you Genesis, uh, Genesis 2, 2, 23, 24, say this, this. You go Philippians chapter 2, 20, uh, this. You go to every, you go to every Bible, basically, 2, 20, 22, 22, 20, 20, 20, 20, they will tell you every 2, 20. 1, 20, they will tell you. Very impressive. Do you leave what you are saying? Say, no, no, that is another story. That is the story the Lord wants. That's what God said. You can never love God more than the way. That's where the judgment is coming. That's why God said, I'm going to judge men, the secrets of men according to Christ. So when we say we are being saved, we are being saved from what? From the wrath of God. We need to be ready. When we say, God, he has given us a standard. And the standard is the Bible. We know what God wants. We have been told to prepare the ship for his coming. His coming. His coming, uh, he, he can come early or you can go and meet him there. So there are always two ways. You can go and meet him before he comes or he's going to come and meet us this, this side of eternity. So we've got a duty. Once you go there, judgment will meet you. You go and meet your judgment there. Or you come and meet you here. You, you, still, you still meet your judgment. What are we going to do? So we have got a duty. We have got a duty. So when we, tell, when we come and tell people to be receiving their cars, and coming and giving people useless prophecies that do not tell people where they are standing in their lives. I see you driving a nice car. Things that do not add spiritual value to somebody's life. Of what use is that car? I see, I, I see you driving a, a, a gray car. I know the car, the type of car I'm driving. Is that prophecy? I see somebody's husband is called John here. Things that are on Facebook, is that prophecy? 
That's what people are calling prophecy now. <clears throat> I see somebody, Michelle, Michelle. Ah, somebody screams, it's my daughter, it's my daughter. Women, they, they say, speak man of God. They easily come around and say, ah, speak, speak. They now say, this, this is a prophet. There is no prophet. He is not a prophet. This is where people are being tricked. These things are on Facebook. They see you two, three times. I see, ah, this woman is called this one. I come and see names here. The next time they come, they say, ah, God is speaking. God is speaking. Come to blow two, three times here, speaking Japanese. They come here. They say, ah, I see somebody like this. I see Belgium, Belgium. Ah, it's me, it's me. The next thing, can you bless the man of God? Make money. These things are on the internet. It's not prophecy. Prophecy is to tell somebody something. Like the Dallas, if you are saying a test that you know happened this afternoon, that no man knows, that's prophecy. No man knows until now it happened now, three, four hours ago. No, no, nobody knows. It's only you because it happened two, three hours. Nobody knows what happened. It's too recent. Three hours ago, I have never talked to anybody. That the first person is calling, that can only be God. Say, okay, good. I take it, God. That's a prophecy. When God is giving me the solution, now God is speaking. But not something that is, can be easily available. No, that's not prophecy. That's in time. That is entertainment. We need to be careful when we talk about prophecy. Entertainment and the prophecy are two different things. We need to be careful. Judgment of God is coming. We need to prepare. Auntie Jovita, are we ready for the judgment of God? I wanted you to finish. Let, let, me, let me go to Sister Sonia. I wanted you to, to, round, to round up. Sister Sonia. Saint Sonia from Spain. I can see the better half is here. I wanted to do the better half, but I said honor ladies now. Ah uh, no, it's not. Home. I think we join from outside. Amen. Ah, uh, I think it's a good question, and the question is quite personal because. For me, looking at the situation of the church, I'm not sure the church is ready, honestly speaking, because we don't live as if we are ready. And especially this time, the Bible said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will have cold. So the love of many of us has grown so cold. And obviously, that's not good for somebody that claimed to be waiting. So as cold as the love of many of us today, it's a, it's a sign that we are not ready, that we are not ready. So the reason why I said it's personal because generalizing it, I could say the church is not ready, but it doesn't change the fact that there are one or two persons that are still trying to make their ways right that the Lord is still pleased with, whether good or bad. There must be somebody out there. There must be people out there that have, God has helped to deal with themselves, to deal with themselves. And by the grace of God, they are just, they are there. They are waiting, at least for the moment. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Theo, can you talk? Okay, maybe it's in this post. Jovita, can you please have the last word? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can the Lord help us? I'm just, I'm just meditating, asking my question. If I'm ready, if, uh, mm -hmm. 
Mm, the Lord help us. The Lord help us. Are we ready? The word of God said the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God, to obey his commandments. Are we obeying the word of God? Are we still living our own ways? I'm, I'm asking my question, my self question. But the word of God said that is a way that cements right unto a man. If this, this word of God is standing, that things we've been doing, we thought, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm right. It's, let God have mercy. May the Lord help us. He said, the wise man fears and departed from evil. Then the prudent one would just take it for granted. This, this question is, is heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. Especially in this 11th hour we are in. Our God is going to pay both of them that we are invited in the third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, even in the eleventh hour, descent. Are we ready? Am I ready? The Lord help us. Are we fearing God again? Are we fearing God? There was a place I read now. Um, mm. Yeah, it's exactly 12, 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Every work, right from the day I came into this earth, right from the day I gave a lot to the Lord Jesus Christ, with every secret thing. That means that the, the work we are doing and the secret thing, in the secret, the things we are doing as well are going to be brought in open way. I remember about David. When the prophet confronted him, and when he realized that he was the one in that shoe, the word of God said, he pleaded, said, God, I have sinned. God says a man after his heart, not just because he did not sin. He sinned. But what was the difference? Do I acknowledge that I have sinned? And I'm walking for help me. I've had people pointed my fault. We are no, I'm, I'm, I'm not making it. It's still, I'm still struggling. Because our God wants us to be perfect. We are still struggling. Can we say yes? Or we are still, if you overlook this, we thought and thought that yes, it doesn't matter. It matters before the Lord. If we ignore it, we, I say God will understand. That means I'm deceiving myself. Am I still deceiving myself? Are we still deceiving ourselves? We are in holiness. What are we doing? Our Lord Jesus Christ is coming like a thief where we don't know. I did not know when I was born, so I will not know the day. We did not know when we were born, so we, we are not going to know the day. That judgment day, that's the day. But the Lord help us, but the Lord help me. We need to pray for a reveal. If we, if, we, if we claim that we don't know where we are failing, we need to pray for the help us, reveal to me. We are not making it right. James chapter 3 said, if one did not sin even with your tongue, that means you are perfect. Our tongue, let us think about it. What do we do with our tongue? Many things are involved. Many things. Church of God. God said, not them that calling him Lord, Lord, who make it, but them that are doing his word. It's going to Judge us based on what we are doing. In our secret places, our pastor started here. He might be keeping his beer there, cigarettes there, still preaching. It doesn't matter. That one is a different. He's just you know, sitting and posing and preaching, telling us this. But after, you know, our God is seeing all these things. The consciousness of the fear of God is in us. Are we ready? Am I ready? How we used to love God, with things we need, to, we, we do for the fear of God, we do them now. I'm sorry to take our time. 
when we go to Job chapter one, I was thinking, Job, is it not a man like you, you and I, with his flesh and blood? Our God was boasting, was proud of Job. Is my is our father proud of us? Say, have you considered my servant Job? He is true evil. He's perfect. He's upright. He's just. Devil thought maybe because of the blessings, the riches and wealth of this world. It's when he tampered with all the, those things. What did he do? He knew where he was coming from. I knew where he was going. What is before him? Had it been, it's just God's judgment day. He would have made it. What he did, he, 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 he turned his clothes, his garments, and he bowed and worshipped the Lord. He said, God, help me. Help us. What is it that dragging us? What is it? Children at the same time, bad news, follow one after the other. Oxen, sheep, everything, even the wife was asking him, do you still tell you think it before the Lord? Don't curse God. This wife was the wife of a man that was upright before God. And the wife said, curse God and die. Can you imagine? Is this wife a virtuous woman? Of a man that was, oh my good God. May the Lord help us. Am I a vessel that's, allowing, that's going to allow enemy to use me? Or am I not carrying my cross daily? There are many questions. This, I, I can't even answer this. But the Lord help me. Help us all. Then we should carry our cross. Deny ourselves. But if we don't deny ourselves, we thought we are anything. We are nothing. We are just dust. We are nothing. Under this garment that covering the nakedness, we, 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 the wind will blow. And everything will be exposed. The Lord help us. The judgment day. You know, when I come across in the word of God, when you see this word judgment day, judgment day, say God. And the darkest day, the gloomy day. Who will be able to stand? And beloved church of God, children of God all over the world. The devil is like bragging now because the church is sleeping. And Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He said that he's born, he, 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 he was sacrificed for us. The sins of the world was laid upon him, crucified for our sake. What are we doing? The church is not ready. I don't think I'm ready. But it's good. by the grace of God, I don't think, because say, there is a way that cement right onto me. If I if I look it on my own way, that means I may be wrong. So to each and every one of us, only God knoweth the heart of man, which is very wicked and evil. And the Lord help us wherever we are still struggling. Only God can explain. If Job was able to be presented to God as a man just. But there's true evil in this world we are in. There's true evil, sure evil. Believe that God will help us to, to eschew from all this evil and wickedness in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord help us to be, to be sincere, not to deceive, deceive ourselves. Because when we know we are doing wrong, we don't want to act on this prayer. Father, punch my heart. Because that is where the devil has built the mansion. This wickedness in the hearts. Never has been imagined using our hearts. Not the hearts of the people in the world, but the children of God. The Lord help us. Let us reflect on this world today. When we go, we're going to, am I ready? If our Lord Jesus Christ comes now, because he's not going to call us on food, he's not going to write to us that I'm coming tomorrow today. Even as I'm saying here, as we're hearing this word, we need to repent. God was so able to make me not to be ready. Or if God man comes now or tomorrow, Father, take them away. We need to repent. We can't stand it. We can't claim to be half the man or half the man on earth here. Ah, when we stand before the Lord, it's going to be horrible. And then there will be no mercy. 
the Lord help us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The judgment day is, is, you know, I don't know how to say it, but may the Lord help us. Those secret things we are doing, let us be conscious of what we are doing. We are not doing to persecute the other. The word of God said, if you do this to the least of mine, it will be better for that call to be hung on one's neck. It should not be a stumbling block to anyone. Because our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for each one of us. Let us be sincere. Let us surrender to our to God that created us. Say, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is what I have now. May the Lord help me. Help us all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. The Lord help us. Humility. The Lord help us. The Lord help us. No one can stand. It was your grace to follow you that did it. I need your grace to follow. Give us your grace to make it that did. Your grace is enough for us. Daddy, give us your grace to follow, Baba. We need your grace to follow you. Abundant grace to follow you. Your grace is enough for us. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. May the Lord help us. May the Lord strengthen us. May the Lord guide us. Enemy is walking to and fro up and down to desert us, to make us to miss this wonderful opportunity God has given us. Our oh, Lord Jesus Christ sacrificing himself. When we never miss it, we will not miss it. We are going to decree in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Sister, I hand over to you in Jesus' name. We conclude in prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Oh, Chris. Let's begin to thank God. Let's thank God for the word he has given us the privilege to hear tonight. Are we ready for the judgment? Let's begin to appreciate him for his mercy. He has brought the word to us in platter. We didn't pay for it. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank, we you. thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, for your Lord, for your love, oh God, oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for the message, oh God, to remind us, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, about your coming, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you have reminded us of Father, oh Father, about how we live in the private of God and in the public, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this word of God. I am that I Lord. Lord. I thank you for Lord. Lord. I thank you for this word of God. I thank you I thank you for this word of God. Nor of him that run it. It is of the Lord that showeth mercy. We are going to pray for the mercy that leads to eternal life to speak for us in the name of Jesus. May the Lord release his mercy, his mercy that will lead us into that kingdom. Undeserving. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ, the Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're also going to pray for the Bible said it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. And he also said, he said, the same spirit that awoke Jesus from the grave. He said, that spirit will quicken our mortal body. We're going to pray for that quickness. May the spirit of God revive us. May the spirit of the Lord energize us. May the spirit of the Lord quicken us to righteousness. May he quicken us to holiness in the name of Jesus. May he motivate us to do the things that please God. May he motivate us to the God come the spirit of God come and give me the quick in the name of the Lord God come to walk in the name of the Lord God oh pray God oh motivate me to walk in righteousness and help us to walk in your right in the mighty Revive us, O Lord. 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 Revive us, Father, whatever we have lost that we need in this grave, Father, we pray that you restore and revive us, O God. Amen. Let's pray for the servants of the Lord that he has used tonight to bring this powerful topic. We pray that the Lord himself will also prepare him. May the Lord help him that the judgment will be sweet for him, that the judgment will, will be with mercy, that the judgment will be with, with, with the Bible said, chast, chastise me not in thy hot displeasure. The judgment will not be with hot displeasure in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God will commit your servant into your hands, O God. We okay. pray, O Lord, okay. committing him, O Lord, to commit to him, O God, we pray that on that last day, after he has after he has led us to you, after he has led us to you, after he has led us Father, we never cast away. Lord, this war that is preaching will not stand against him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, show him mercy and love him. Father, hold the hands of your servant. Give him the grace to run to the end. The grace to endure. Father, we pray for that kind of endurance. Help him to endure all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. We are going to commit CHMI into the hands of the Lord. We are going to pray that CHMI should be a church that is ready for the judgments.
should be a church that is ready for Christ, a bride that is adorned. May CHM may be a glorious church in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, and my Lord, oh Father, we pray for you, my child, oh God, Father, strengthen him, my child, oh God, strengthen him, oh God, strengthen him, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you prepare every one of us. Lord, prepare each and every one of us. Make us ready. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, have your need your help, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the privilege you have given to us to be here. Father, we thank you for showing us mercy and still keeping us here till today. Many died even without even having a warning. Many, oh Lord, are gnashing and weeping in the bony bunches of hell. But my Lord and my God, you have given us a chance. Help us, oh Lord, to put it to a good use in the name of Jesus. May tonight not be against us. May tonight not be written or used against us in the last day in the judgment. But for the sake of the message we have heard tonight. May we better our life and make amendment on our soul in the name of Jesus. As many of us, oh God, that are growing weaker, as many of us that are growing cold, as many of us that are offended, as many of us as are weak, as many of us as are lukewarm, as many of us as are distracted, as many of us as are down, as many of us, oh God, as are not revived. Now, invite you. Oh, Lord, come and take over. <clears throat> Jehovah God, come and take over. Come and have your way, O oh God. Release your hand, O oh God, of strength. Release your hand of encouragement. Release your hand of revival. Release your hand of concentration. The voice of the Lord speak into our life, O oh God. And let there be a change, O oh Lord, in our spirit, man. May you quicken our mortal body. May you revive us again. May you awaken us spiritually. May you redeem us, O oh God, from the land of the dead. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for ourselves. We use ourselves as point of contact to reach, oh God, all your children round about the global. My Lord and my God, we pray that as many, oh God, as have been consecrated to you once before, that have known the truth, that have tested of the power of salvation and resurrection, that in some way they are done. My Lord and my God, may you revive them. May you awaken them. And as many, oh God, as have not known you, Father, oh God, may you show yourself to them. Reveal yourself to them, my Lord and my God. Manifest your power in the name of Jesus and every powers of darkness, every forces that are trapping your children down, that are closing and offering the light in the church. Let God arise and let his enemies cut her in the name of the Lord Jesus. My Lord and my God in thunder with volcano fire, we suffer, Lord, may you arise, consume everything that is not of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the voice of the Lord break it. Hear the cedar of Lebanon. My Lord and my God will pray that your voice of God will break every war against our life. Every embargo, every satanic embargo, evil blockage that is disconnecting us from you, that is blocking us from you. May your voice of God break them out of our life. Every stone heartedness, let your voice break them out. May we be Come soft, O oh Lord, to your word. May our head, O oh God, retain your warnings. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of disobedience, despite, despitefulness and negligence, take it away from us. Take away spiritual stubbornness. Take away spiritual laziness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you build an edge round about us. Protect us, O oh God. Prepare us, O oh God, for the rainy day. In the name of Jesus, wherever we are drained, wherever we have been drained, 
Whatever we have leaked out, uh, Father, may you pass our life, oh God, and may you refill us again. Anointing us, anoint us again. Top up our oil, oh God. We pray for extra oil. We pray for fresh anointing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Break us, scatter us, remold us, fill us again, and begin to use us all over again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That I do that, we should know how to do best and take your glory. Oh God, uphold your ministry, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the leaders, the minister, uphold them. We pray for our children. May you uphold them, oh God. May you empower them. May you strengthen them. Help them, oh Lord, to follow after your will. So that at the end of all, there will be reasons and cause to glorify you. For in Jesus, Christ's mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you right now and forevermore. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. To me, she God bless you, Sister Jovita. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Helen. Stop the recording. Is it on? Don't I lose? Can you stop it for you? I've stopped. Can you help me stop it? Shalom. Yeah. Oi. Can I stop it? I don't know. You can stop it. Through, okay. Yeah. Is it to, to stop recording. Stop recording, Tomish. <laughs>